Cerebrum. Introduction. Cerebrum is the largest part of the brain, made of two cerebral hemispheres, right and left, which are separated by a deep longitudinal fissure, which contains the corpus callosum. It is enveloped by protective membranes called meninges. Collection of nerve cell bodies, along with neuroglial cells, is known as gray matter, which forms the outer surface layer of the cerebral hemispheres. White matter is made up of myelinated axons and forms the bulk of the deeper structures of the cerebrum. Its role is to connect various areas of the cerebrum together, that is structurally and functionally. Strictly speaking, only the outer gray matter layer can be called the cerebral cortex. More details about white matter will be discussed as a separate topic. Cerebrum is derived embryologically from the telencephalon, so the telencephalon is also known as cerebrum. Telencephalon. Telencephalon refers to the region of the brain that includes the cerebral cortex and several subcortical structures, including the hippocampus and the basal ganglia. Diencephalon consists of the thalamus, hypothalamus, epithalamus, and metathalamus. Now let's talk about the cerebrum in detail. Allocortex. Allocortex itself is of two types: archicortex or archicortex, which includes the hippocampus and the dentate gyrus; paleocortex, which includes the olfactory cortex. Cerebral hemisphere. Each cerebral hemisphere is divided into six lobes. They are frontal lobe, parietal lobe, temporal lobe. Occipital lobe, insula, which is the central lobe, and the limbic lobes. Among two cerebral hemispheres, one is dominant by its functions such as language, speech, comprehension. The cerebrum is full of grooves and ridges running in every direction. These are called sulci and gyri, respectively. On the basis of position, there are four types of sulci: axial sulci. Some sulci develop along the axis of a rapidly growing or developing area. Example: calcarine sulcus. Limiting sulci develop along the planes separating cortical areas which differ in functions. Example: central sulcus, which separates frontal motor cortex from the parietal sensory cortex. Operculated sulcus. A sulcus may be between two structurally different areas. And a third sulcus may lie in its wall and does not appear on the surface. For example, lunate sulcus. Complete sulcus is deep enough to produce an elevation in the wall of a ventricle. For example, a collateral calcarine sulci produces elevation in the wall of lateral ventricle. On the basis of formation, there are two: primary sulcus formed before birth, for example, central sulcus. Secondary sulcus, sulci formed within others due to the continued growth of adjoining areas of cortex. Example: the splenium of the corpus callosum conveys a large number of fibers from the temporal and occipital cortices to the parietal occipital sulcus, creating a number of axial and limiting sulci within the wall of the parietal occipital sulcus. Let's take a look at the main cerebral sulci. Central sulcus of Rolando separates the frontal and parietal lobes. Lateral sulcus, also known as Sylvian fissure, separates the frontal and temporal lobes anteriorly and the parietal and temporal lobes posteriorly. Cingulate sulcus separates the cingulate gyrus from the frontal and parietal lobes. Parietal occipital sulcus separates the parietal and occipital lobes. Calcarine sulcus divides the occipital lobe horizontally into cuneus (superior) and the lingual (inferior) gyrus. Cerebral epithelium has three surfaces. They are superior lateral surface, medial surface, inferior surface, which has orbital and tentorial surface. Sulci and gyri of superior lateral surface of cerebrum. Following are the sulci and gyri of the frontal lobe. Sulci, precentral sulcus, superior frontal sulcus, inferior frontal sulcus, 
lateral sulcus, gyri, precentral gyrus, superior frontal gyrus, middle frontal gyrus, inferior frontal which is divided into pars orbitalis, pars triangularis, and pars opercularis. Following are the sulci and gyri of the parietal lobe. Sulci are as follows. Postcentral sulcus, intraparietal sulcus, upturned end of posterior ramus of lateral sulcus, gyri, postcentral gyrus, superior parietal lobule gyrus, inferior parietal lobule gyrus, inferior parietal lobule divided into supramarginal, angular, and arcus temporo occipitalis. Following are the sulci and gyri of the temporal lobe. Sulci, posterior ramus of lateral sulcus, superior temporal sulcus, and inferior temporal sulcus. The gyri are superior temporal gyrus, middle temporal gyrus, inferior temporal gyrus. Following are the sulci and gyri of the occipital lobe. Sulci, transverse occipital sulcus, lateral occipital sulcus, lunate sulcus, and calcarine sulcus, gyri, arcus parieto occipital gyrus, superior occipital gyrus, and inferior occipital gyrus, sulci and gyri of medial surface of cerebral hemisphere, sulci, callosal sulcus, cingulate sulcus, anterior and posterior par olfactory sulcus, Suprasplenial sulcus, parietal occipital sulcus, calcarine sulcus, gyri, cingulate gyrus, medial frontal gyrus, paraterminal gyrus, paraolfactory gyrus, cunis, precunis. Paracentral lobule is a continuation of precentral and postcentral gyri on medial surface, is higher center for micturation and defecation. Isthmus is a narrow region between splenium and calcarine sulcus. Sulci and gyri of inferior surface of cerebral hemisphere. Following are the sulci and gyri of the orbital part. Sulci. Olfactory sulcus. Orbital sulcus. Lateral sulcus. Gyri. Gyrus rectus. Medial orbital gyrus. Lateral orbital gyrus. Anterior orbital gyrus and posterior orbital gyrus. Following are the sulci and gyri of the tentorial part. Sulci, collateral sulcus, medial, occipitotemporal sulcus, lateral, rhinal sulcus, gyri, medial occipitotemporal gyrus, lateral occipitotemporal gyrus, uncus, parahippocampal gyrus, lingual gyrus. Functional areas of cerebral cortex. Types of functional areas are motor areas, chiefly concerned with motor activities, give rise to pyramidal tracts. Sensory areas are chiefly concerned with sensory functions and receive efferents from thalamic nuclei. Association areas are neither motor nor sensory, but concerned with integration, association, and cognitive functions. Approximately 75% of cerebral cortex is made of association areas.